Aprons are making a comeback, and what better way to recycle one than to make one out of an old shirt? And joining us now is Tess Poe. She's the owner of Beehive Sewing Studio in Northampton, and you're going to show us how to do it. I am. So we start off with a good old-fashioned shirt, if we're making it for mom or dad, maybe one of their old shirts. That's right. So this is an old shirt. Pop quiz, what's this shirt made of? Linen? Linen. It's linen. This is a great material to use for an apron because dish towels are often made of linen as well. Is it because they're absorbent they or? Are. That's right. Okay. So, but a cotton shirt works great too. So what we're going to do is have a look over here at our finished sample. This is an apron that's made from a, an Oxford shirt that we've cut up in a couple different parts. And a lot of the buttons are still there. And the buttons are still there. So let's show you how we're going to do this. We've got one in process, and I'm not going to cut up your shirt I today, say, I, I promise. I love this. So I'm going to put this shirt away because <laughs> it's mine, and I would like it in one piece when we finish today. Well, let's have a quick look at it, though, just so sure. that folks can see what parts we're going to use. So the first thing we're going to do is cut off the sleeves. The sleeves are what are going to be used for the ties that go around the waist. Front of the shirt is going to be buttoned up, and we're going to cut right across the front here and just use that front for the part that you see in the apron. So more or less the only part we don't need is the back of the shirt. Well, we actually do need a little bit of the we'll back of the shirt. We'll use it later, okay. Just to point out, this big piece of fabric back of the shirt is going to end up being part of our waistband. So you were just talking about some 4th of July barbecues. This is a great hostess gift, great thing to bring to Definitely. a barbecue instead of cooking or going out and buying something. So what we've done is taken our sleeves, each side. So we cut the sleeves off, we've put taken them on either side. Piece of the back, we've folded it in half so that we can use it for our waistband. And then I've done a little bit of ruffling across the front here. Um, if you wanted to wear That's this That's more apron. of an advanced skill though, right? right? The you ruffling? Might, you might not want some no, ruffles. No, I'm not a big ruffle guy. Um, I have gone ahead, I don't know if folks at home can see this, but I've gone ahead and used a serger to finish the edge of the, the shirt front here. If you don't have access to a serger, you can just fold that over and do a quick hem. You can use some ribbon, some bias tape, whatever you'd like. And that bias tape is what it, it adheres to it, so it's kind of like a clothing tape, right? Well, bias tape is actually doesn't have uh, any adhesive on it. You can buy some other fusible tape that um, we like to actually sew with, with the thread. I don't always advocate using the tape, but uh, bias tape is just a fancy word for a ribbon that's been folded in half a couple of times. So you can put a nice little edging on something. So I've gone ahead and started sewing this. I'm going to finish up sewing it, and then if you want to do some sewing, you can. I would like to but try. You've used up your first aid quota for the day. <laughs> exactly. so I, don't, I, think... I don't have any more blood left to, right. to lose. Exactly. So we're just going to go ahead. How imperative is a sewing machine for this project? Do you need it, or well, can you get away with hand sewing? You know, you can hand sew pretty much anything. Of course, years ago, that's what folks always did. That's so true. This you just certainly takes more can time. hand sew everything. will take a little bit more time. When you see how fast it is for me to go ahead and stitch. And now I see what she's doing. I don't know if we can see that at home, but you're taking away all of the pins. You can't sew over pins, right? Well, you can, you know, that's that's a personal choice. And I'm going to tell a quick story that I, I always used to sew over pins until that one day when, in fact, I did hit a pin and the needle broke, the pin broke, it flew up, you know, towards my face. And it was like that moment in that Christmas story movie where I said, <laughs> I shot my eye out. And so, you know, it's it's much safer to not go ahead and sew over the pins. Um, but certainly you do want to pin your work because it's going to keep everything in place a lot better than if you didn't have any pins. So Now I'm sure that people, if they wanted to do this at home, because it's a relatively complex pattern, but once again, if you follow a pattern and follow instructions, it's, it's something that everyone can do. Right, and you can certainly use an existing apron as a guide. Uh, you know, if you have a look at an apron, you'll see that it's got, you know, a front panel and it's got something to tie around the waist, and that's it. So as long as, you know, you're following that, that model, you don't necessarily need a, a detailed pattern. You know, I just went ahead and sort of winged it as far as the width of that waistband. Um, what you can do after that is go ahead and add some pockets on the front. Sometimes I like to add a loop because some folks like to just put, you know, a, a spoon or a spatula through a loop, and that's a nice way to do it. Um, you can involve the kids with hand sewing and add some buttons, add some ribbon, um, lots of ways that you can embellish, and then you it can looks, wear So once again, apron. to summarize, we've used the top of the shirt, which was originally, right. originally, originally the, the front of the, the shirt. two front panels. And that's become the apron. That's right. And then the, the waistband has been created by taking both of the sleeves and fastening them. Right. And what I did on the sleeves, when you cut off the sleeve, you can see that a sleeve is not, not a rectangle. No. So you may want to trim that down to a rectangular type of a shape. Again, no need to stress out over, you know, dimensions. And you make mistakes and, and it's fun. That's what it's all about. You can do it with your kids. So Tess, why don't you right. throw this one on? Well, okay. I'm going to 
uh, see how I look in, in an Oxford apron that seems a little bit feminine, but you know what? Why not have some fun with it? <laughs> you have a few more ruffles on that one than I, ha <laughs> than I have on mine. Well, Tess, thank you very much, but we aren't done with Tess yet. So later in the show, Tess, you're going to show us how to make a t-shirt even more trendy. That's right. One more use for an old Oxford shirt. Can't wait. Terrific. Hey, today 